as I say, what we're going to do now is we're going to take, take a few minutes looking to see how can we do all these things we've talked about, but there are, are there any ways to do those things faster? So the title of this is Faster Analysis Using High Performance Computing. But there is another way of rephrasing this uh, in the form of a question. Something like this. Now, to anyone out there who wants to go fast, anybody, I want to go fast and give a suit. <laughs> All right, so there we go. Not sure if it was worth it, but there you go. <laughs> Is there anyone out there who wants to go fast? That's what we're going to be talking about. Uh, when you're doing uh, a fatigue analysis, one of the challenges you have is the fact that uh, you're dealing with lots of data. And, uh, and if anything, that things are getting even more of a challenge. So, for example, if you haven't noticed, finite element models are getting bigger. I remember when I started doing this stuff back in the early 90s, you know, a big FE body model was 100,000 uh, elements. All right, And now we're talking several million elements, and you're probably going to prove me wrong and say much bigger than that. Uh, so FE models are, are, are getting bigger. Uh, one thing to note, uh, we have made some changes at uh, version 10 to make the FE visualization faster in design life. We're not, we don't have a formal session here in, in this two days of it going through all the new features in the product. We're kind of just throwing them in as they're relevant to the presentation. One of the new enhancements in 10 is the finite element visualization. That used to bog down once you got to about 500,000 elements. So the actual visualization was getting slow to manipulate the model. Uh, I've used it with over 4 million uh, element models, very fast to manipulate. So worth trying out design life in version 10 for the FE visualization. So finite element models are getting bigger. <coughs> Multi-body dynamics is being used increasingly to generate the loads. Now, as long as you're happy with those loads, that means that, hey, nothing's stopping you running that model over and over again, creating lots of different loading files, maybe different suspension models. Uh, so multi-body dynamics is actually enabling more loading scenarios to be modeled than perhaps you could physically test. So there's more and more, more, and more uh, jobs to be run in that way. And there's more pressure to assess more design options, not just here's a design, is it going to pass? Well. Let's look at this variant of the product, or this variant of it, or what about if we change this? Maybe getting into optimization. Let's look at all a variety of different, uh, what we can do to the design. Now, all those things only are practical to do as with fatigue in the loop, if you like, to assess those designs, if you can do that fatigue calculation fast enough. If you can't, you're going to come up with some simplified approximation to get you there. So we want to go fast, right? We want to go, how, how can we do this? How can we, you don't, you don't have more time to do these things. So if anything, our fatigue analysis has got to go faster. So how do we perform a quicker CAE fatigue prediction? Well, I'm glad to see all of you know who Jeff Mentley is now. So that gives you some confidence. Jeff did a, uh, a webinar a few weeks ago called uh, 10 Ways to Perform a Faster Fatigue Analysis. And... Uh, Jeff did come up to me prior to that webinar, sort of scratching his head a little bit. He basically said, I only know three. So we had to kind of discuss it a little bit to say, okay, so how do we, how do we, uh, how do we make it go, how do we cover 10? But basically the three are, you can reduce the number of calculation points. You know, calculate fewer, don't calculate all four, four million points in your model. Let's be a little smarter and calculate a subset of those. The second one is, I've got this gazillion points in my loading time history. How can I shorten down the number of actual calculation points in my loading function to something I can calculate more quickly? And the third one is find some way to throw more grunt at it, more computing power one way or another to do this more quickly. So the first two are all about doing it smarter. How can you do a smarter, as engineers, we don't have any choice, right? We have to make some approximations. We have to make some assumptions. And when it comes to doing fatigue prediction, it's no different. It's really important. The first thing we do is how do we do this calculation smarter? It might be, for example, like the Bendix example. 
you are able to do something in the frequency domain, or you're, you know, you're, you're, you're simulating a shaker in the frequency domain. What you don't want to do is try and simulate that in the time domain. Get a big log time history for uh, you know, two hours worth of data and, and throw it in. So you know, thinking about the problem, what can you simulate, uh, is all part of that. But the main two ways, reduce the number of calculation points and reduce the number of data points in your loading. One of the nice features about design life is that we can have multiple runs in the same analysis where we can do a more detailed analysis but only on a decreasing number of points. So you can do a quick analysis uh, on a large number of points, find the hotspots, and then do a more detailed analysis. So that's what all this is about, doing it smarter. But what I'm talking about today is really that third one. You're as smart as you can be. You've figured out all your methods. You know, you're the guru. This is how we're going to do it. We can't do it any different. This is the only way we're going to get the right results. Fine. How can we throw more power at it to get it quicker? What I'm going to be talking about is primarily on the actual calculation time of the analysis. It's worth pointing out another new feature in 10. What you'll see in design life when you run your analysis is that oftentimes the translation stage of gathering all the information from your finite element results, that can be a big chunk of time. That translation stage of reading finite element results into design life. One change we've made at 10 is we've basically removed the limit on the amount of memory you can throw at that. And if you can do that finite element translation in memory, uh, then that's going to be a big time saving for you. And there's a, so there's a preference there in, in, in design life called memory buffer size. You can increase that many gigabytes if, you're if you've got enough physical memory on your machine. That will speed up the translation time. OK, so how do we speed things up? How do we go faster? First thing is we can use more processing threads. Now, processing threads are what you need to take advantage of the fact that your computers are multi-core. It used to be the case that in a computer, you have a chip with a processing core on it. Well, a few years ago, they reached the point of they couldn't make that go any faster, so they put multiple cores on a single chip. So you now have four core machines, eight core machines, where each one of those acts like a separate processor. So that, in order for us to go faster on one of those machines, we have to take advantage of these multi-core architectures. And on a PC, on a PC that, that's what's known as shared memory processing. So what you have is, yeah, you've got, multiple, you've got multiple processors, but effectively they're all sharing the same core memory on your, on your machine. So it's one machine just with multiple processors. As standard, Design Life uses two threads, which means it's using two processing cores for its analysis. But you can add additional processing cores. So there's, you can add a new license, and a, every license that you add will allow you to use an additional processing core, however big your machine is. Eight core, 16 core, 32 core, you can add those thread licenses. If you're using CDS, which is our token licensing system, each one of those additional licensing, uh, those, those additional processing cores will, uh, will take just an additional 150 CDS units. It used to be more than that. We actually reduced it at version 9 or 9.1. I can't remember which it was. So that's, it's now only 150 units per additional thread. So how well does that work? Actually, it works very well. Uh, we had to do some work to tune it. Uh, to, but fundamentally, with the fatigue analysis, it, can, it, it lends itself very well to splitting across multiple processing. Because every individual point in a finite element model that's used in a fatigue analysis becomes like a separate problem. So it can, it can, it can share out the calculations very nicely. So you see in this example, we're using eight threads on a processing, uh, on an example, and we get 7.44 times faster. So almost exactly one for one. You put more threads, it's going to speed up linearly. So that's a good way on a single machine to, to speed things up. So that's on a single machine. What about if you want to start using high-performance computing? These days, in addition to people running jobs on their own workstations, you'll be running your large abacus jobs, for example, maybe on an HPC, on a high-performance computing environment 
a Linux cluster, something like that. We, Design Life now also supports that distributed processing so that rather than you having to have a, an analysis performed on a single machine, you can actually distribute that job across multiple machines or multiple nodes uh, of a cluster. And the way we've done that is to use an industry standard way of doing it. By default, we use uh, Intel, uh, Intel's implementation of something called MPI. MPI is a, a message passing interface. And it's the way that the different nodes of a, uh, a cluster communicate with each other. So we support Intel. We also support Microsoft, HPC. And at version 10, we also support IBM. So we support IBM's Linux uh, implementation of, 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 of MPI. But from an engineer's perspective, all you re really have to know is that that just helps the different nodes or different computers talk to each other. Now, it's one thing to do it on a HPC environment. Some of you might be saying, nice, I don't have uh, a Linux cluster that I can throw this on. One of the things we've also provided is the ability to distribute this across multiple workstations. So you've got multiple PCs in your office. You want to distribute a job across multiple PCs, you can do it. And we've actually provided, bottom left-hand corner there, you can see a, 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 we've provided an actual uh, application called DT Distrib, which is a, to distribute these design life jobs. And it's, you give it the flow prop name, you give it the batch file, you tell it what computers you want to distribute the job over, and it will take care of the MPI uh, command that's required. So we've tried to make it as simple as possible for the simple jobs, also supporting the HPC clusters at the high end. So you can use it with a cluster or just split a job across multiple PCs. So what does it take to use distributed processing? But most important thing to, to, uh, to understand, we're talking about a batch job. So this is getting a job where you're running something like you're running the flow proc command Pretty much everything in, in ENCODE software can be run on a command line. Yes, it's got a nice interface and it's graphical, but it's also important that you can run automate processes and run it using uh, a batch line. So this is a batch job that you are then distributing in, in this way. So how does that work in practice? Well, so for example, let's say we have a, um, a job that we're running and we want to run it across three quad core computers. So you would typically, you'd run it on this, your, let's say, your workstation. You'd pull the various licenses you'd need for a strain life analysis, and you'd be pulling an additional processing threads for running to take care of, to uh, take advantage of all four processing cores on your machine. Now what you can do is by using a new license called distributed processing, you can actually start using two additional slave machines where all the additional licenses they pull are just additional thread licenses. So in that way, we can actually use all 12 threads on the job, and that's going to be six times faster than just using the regular two threads you get in the base. How well does that work? Well, again, what you'll find is, we'll look at this in a couple of different ways. If we just look at the reduced runtime for distributing a job, then in this particular case, we've actually gone all the way up. We've, we're using multiple threads across multiple nodes of a cluster. Just looking at the impact of using multiple threads, we've gone from something which is over 11,000 seconds on four threads, which I believe is over three hours, down to uh, 482 seconds on 96 threads. So that's about, I believe, eight minutes. So we've gone from over three hours to eight minutes just by increasing the number of uh, threads. Um, and you get some idea of how that scales linearly if we look at it in terms of number of nodes. So this is running on, on, on one node, this problem. Uh, each, each one of the nodes has got the same number of threads running it. So we've got one, two, four, eight nodes of a cluster, HPC cluster, and it is almost exactly eight times faster. So if you've got nodes to put it on, you can go faster. Uh, in this particular case, this is running on a, on a real Linux cluster, uh, a Westmere machine using IBM uh, MPI. 
Now, this particular case, this is the best case that you can, you can have. Uh, we're only looking at the analysis time. This is not the whole, this doesn't include the translation time. And this is a fairly small model with a fairly long calculation time. But still, the, uh, the, the, the scalability you get with design life is very, is very good. Looking at a more real world problem, this is also, this is, this is a full body model, real, real customer problem, both sheet steel and spot welds. And again, same result. You throw more, uh, you sh throw more nodes of a cluster on the HPC and it's going to linear, linear, linearly scale. So in summary, yes, there's a need to go faster with your fatigue analysis. We appreciate that. And we can scale design life linearly on a single machine, either by throwing multiple threads at it, or if you have the environment to do so, you can also throw more computers at it. And it will scale using distributed processing uh, as a feature. So yes, you can go fast if that's what you need to do. Okay? Thank you.